You just hear me I'm crying cause I can't feel you My heart's sinking to my feet I'm lying cause I can't touch you Why can't you just Okay everybody, hello, hello! So, I'm not eating as fast as I expected to. But yes, unboxing today of the St. Jude rewards that we got from our last fundraiser, as well as our stash exchange. Yay! So let me go ahead and post the link to the Instagram picture I took. Now this is a picture of the stuff I brought to the stash exchange. This is the stuff that I gave up. I, I don't want notifications. Um, this is the stuff I was giving to them. Well, it's not giving to them. Um, we basically take all of our unused and extra yarn and we put it on tables. We sorted it by color. And then, so we've made this into the whole deal. Like it's a dinner, it's catered, and it's a paid event. Uh, but I get to see my nerdy knitters. So we go there, we put our yarn on a table and Everyone brings the stuff that they don't have plans for and all that. So, that Instagram link right there, that's the stuff that I was sending off. That's the stuff I was giving them. I'm like, I don't have plans for these items, I don't... So put that on the table, get sorted by color. And then while we're eating dinner, one of the ladies, is, she gives, we get tickets as we come in. So we get the tickets, and she starts calling off numbers, so it's random. Uh, so... I'm gonna go ahead and come to the screen. Hello, you get little me right now. So yeah, it's random, and so we all get a ticket. And so we go up there, and each of us, so when we our name gets called, we get to choose one item. And one item can be, let's say there's four skeins of the exact same thing. That one item can be all four skeins, because you want stuff to match, if you can. If someone brought in multiple skeins of something. So, uh, and they went through two rounds of this, so you could go up and choose something, come back. And that way, um, everybody gets something nice, ideally, you get something nice. You, you at least get a shot at something you want, because we have, at, at, while we're setting stuff out, while the dinner's getting prepared, um, we have a ch chance to, like, you know, peruse and sort of do window shopping of, like, what kind of yarn is there. So, um... We just got to choose one item before everybody came in. So she read the numbers in one order, and then she read them in reverse order. I was like, I was second to last. So I got to go pretty much twice in a row and grab two items. I don't remember what my second pull was, um, because I was kind of at the end. All the things I had sort of, like, had my eye on were mostly gone already. Uh, but I will pull out what I have and uh, give you guys a look-see at that. But I'm going to keep eating. So I have a Marie Calendar's Chicken Pot Pie. Uh, and I'm gonna keep eating. So I'm gonna mute myself again. Well, do I want to mute myself? No, I'll just put the mic up. But go ahead, ask questions. We're gonna do unboxing. I should flip that box over though, so you guys can see what I see. That it's a St. Jude box. St. Jude! I'm so excited to open this because the last time they sent us a box, it had some seriously surprising stuff in it. Uh, I was not expecting the stuff I received, so it was just amazing. Uh, I really need to start wearing that apron. Yeah, let's start wearing the apron. Anyway, so enjoy the music. I'm going to keep eating.
Does anybody else's thing say that I'm playing Minecraft? They should not say that. I saved it. There we go. It doesn't. It updated. Update! Update! So, here's a milestone I never really considered celebrating before. But, because of the St. Jude fundraising, um, back in November, I... I reached over 200,000 views on my channel, which is super crazy, super crazy. Um, my, you know, normal streaming would not have got me those numbers, but the St. Jude stuff, I got to be on front page twice, which is, was amazing, crazy experience. Um, I don't think I will ever see numbers like that again, ever, ever. Um, so... But, so a milestone I never considered celebrating before would be like 250,000 viewers, views of the channel, not viewers, views of the channel. We're at 241,000 now. Hello, hello, Undertaker. Welcome to the crochet couch. We're starting off with a little chat while I uh, <clears throat> finish dinner. And, uh, <laughs> you know, I need to put that cat on top of Capogen. So thank you so much for that follow and I can make it correct. All right, so we got, what do I call that? Something, something alerts, there we go. I gotta put it above the capogen stuff. Boop, boop, boop. All right, so now if something else happens, the cat will be on top of the floating emotes. So welcome to the channel. Uh, and yeah, so 250,000 views of the channel. No, 250,000, jeez. Captioner, web captioner. I'm, I'm actually considering a possibly a paid captioning service where something like Dragon Naturally Speaking, I don't know if that does captions, but I know after a while it it learns your, your accent, your dialect, the way you speak, and it'll be, we come in here and follow you by Sir Venom. Well, sweet. Are you interested in fiber arts? Uh, did Sir Venom show you the, the scarf I made him? Because that's, that's your thing. I can see that's why he... Uh, told you to come on over and hang out because today we're going to be doing an unboxing of the St. Jude um let's see the the St. Jude rewards that got mailed out because we do a lot of St. Jude fundraising in here he said you made up a scarf but I haven't seen it yet what okay let me see if I can find the Instagram post and then I can I already have Instagram up from the other yarny thing I was talking about so uh, I hope you enjoy fiber arts as that is uh, kind of what we do all right, so let's see. No, nope, that's not what I wanted to click on. Two, three, okay, that's the messy part of the scarf. Oh, I guess I didn't post a, I guess I did. So this Instagram post, uh, you're gonna have to flip through all the pictures because like the finished scarf is at the end. So there's like, I don't know, seven pictures in there. How many pictures did I put up? That's, that's goofy. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six, six pictures. So you're gonna wanna go to the end, you see the scarf. Uh, it's very Twitch-like and very Venom-like. Yeah, Venom's super cool. Um, he's just, I, I, I was thinking about this earlier today. I don't get to go, I don't get to go to TwitchCon this year. And who knows what the rest of, you know, 2019 into 2020 is going to hold for anybody. Uh, well, thank you, Undertaker. Yeah. I, I really enjoyed it. Like, I, now I know I'm like, hey, I could do something like that for myself. It'd be kind of weird to put the verified check mark because I'm not a partner, uh, but I could maybe put two Twitch glitches on the ends uh, and do it that way instead. So like the affiliates can get two glitches and then the partners can get glitch, uh, verified symbol, check mark, glitch and check mark. So yeah, that's the thing. He said he was gonna hang it up and I'm like, you're not gonna wear it. You're just gonna hang it on the wall. like. It's kind of cool, but you can wear it. It's fine. <laughs> I made it with stuff that's durable and can be washed. <laughs> so that's kind of stuff we do here. Uh, today is going to be just showing off St. Jude stuff and other yarn stuff. Um, 
I may or may not crochet, depends on what else is going on. Um, there's also a yarn, and I tried explaining it to my boyfriend this way. I'm like, there's basically a yarn con that's happening in November where I can take classes to do certain things. And I was super, super excited last night because I'm like, oh my gosh, Marley Bird's gonna be there. And of course, he just gives me this blank stare. And I'm like, Marley Bird is a very big name in the crochet world. So it's like, I will pay to be in her class just to be in the same room as her. So, I mean, she's, she has been like on the forefront of like digital crochet outreach and advocacy. Uh, she's had a podcast since 2001. Like she was way ahead of the curve as far as like getting fiber routes out there. So I have this chance to take a class from her. All the classes I feel are kind of expensive, but they're with these very well-known people. So their time is worth money. So, so how much is this, her class? Let's see, what's it called? Double your, that's not the Marley Bird one. Oh, the interwoven crochet where I've learned to basically do lace stitches but on top of each other with different colors and so it's a $75 class for three hours so $25 an hour to spend with someone of that caliber uh, I'm not uh, I'm probably not gonna worry about it <laughs> that's what I'm gonna say here probably not gonna worry about it uh, I've, I've talked to him I've told him like this is going to be an expensive weekend if I do all the things I want to do learn techniques because in addition to crochet um, I weave and one of the things I got at the stash exchange that I'll be unboxing is uh, a whole set of loom knitting looms so loom knitting is a thing it's during loom knitting a lot of people associate it with kids crafts uh, because it's very easy first of all it's very easy uh, I'm definitely gonna have to watch YouTube videos on how to do it though because if I have done it in the past it was literally 30 years ago uh, so loom knitting I have many sizes of looms now and uh, yeah many sizes but I'm like well I didn't get as much yarn this time around but I got things that I can use up my yarn so uh, I've, it's been said that collecting yarn that, that purchasing yarn and using yarn are actually two separate hobbies <laughs> And the reason this is sad is because you see yarn, pretty colors. Mm. It's pretty colors. They, they're very, very, they're tactile, they're soft and squishy. Oh my gosh, hi Kranitz! Welcome to the crochet couch. Welcome back. How are you doing? I bet you miss your Mary and your, your, um, your PG-13. Paint and PG, they're, they're, they're gone. It's just like you at the homestead, right? Holding everything down. I'm still eating here, so I'm trying to... Well, see, now I'm here to keep you company. So, um, I'm gonna at least eat half of my dinner. Uh, I had to stop and pick up a prescription, so I was a little later getting home than I expected to. And I haven't been able to eat yet. Food is good. It's the dudes. How you guys doing? Like, are you making good food? I don't think Simon really cooks. Nom 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 food. And of course me being... Uh, we drove through the gathering here and there were so many goth girls it made me depressed. Why was it depressed? I mean I thought you were kind of hanging out with someone for a bit. Are you depressed that you can't be with her and there were other there? You're living on chicken strips. Well, I mean, that's not the worst thing. I mean, chicken strips, you get some protein at least. I have chicken pot pie. I thought you had a girl. No? Did that kind of fizzle? Oh, I see you can't visit her. All right. Just sad. Yeah, I'm so sorry about your cars. Like, what, you had two cars die? Uh, it's really depressing. I mean... Ooh, just a uh, that was a bad piece of chicken. 
do you want 12 kids? Like, there are many women who would not want 12 kids. I'm just gonna throw that out there. It's probably gonna be a hard one to sell people on. Root beer float! Hello! Good to see you! Simon Tex fixed his- Oh, he fixed his car! Awesome! At least one of you guys can get around. Uh, yes? Yes, you want six- Yes, yes, you want 12 kids. Okay, and you know. <laughs> hey, Root beer float does want kids. Root beer float! Um... If you mind, do you identify as male or female? I don't think I've ever asked. And if you don't want to answer, that's fine too. You just have a very gender neutral name. So I want to, I mean, if we're talking about kids, I just kind of want to know what side of the, the aisle you're coming from on that. Because uh, I'm trying to tell Cryon it would be very hard to convince a woman to have 12 kids. <laughs> Undertaker wants kids! Um, now, here, here's where I stand on it. There was a time when I wanted kids. I still would like kids. However, I understand I'm getting older. And no, I'm not saying you don't get a vote. I'm not saying you don't get a vote. I'm saying it'd be very hard to convince someone. And and so let, let me go into to, to my reasoning here. There was a time where I really wanted kids. And I'm actually feeling, I'm feeling the sadness of not being able to have kids. Now, I may or may not have a medical condition where I can't have kids, but that, that's, not the, that's not the point. The point is, I have not yet been in a relationship, or, and felt comfortable enough to have kids, or I've not been in a living situation where I felt that having a kid would be appropriate. Like right now, I have four other adults I live with. So, now, Cran, it's the reason I'm saying that, that there's a convincing to go on, like it takes a toll on your body. You are exhausted. You, like, your nutrients are being sucked out of your own bones to provide for this other life growing in your belly. So, I mean, you can have a say in it all you want, but, like, you don't have to go through it. So there's, there's a thing there, so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a big consideration. I mean, back in, like, the 1700s, it'd be like, oh, a woman's sick, uh, get her pregnant, have her have another baby. Shit, it'll fix her right up. No. Babies are hard on the body. They're so hard. Very, yes, Kranath, I have. I worked 10 years in retail. 10 plus years in retail. I think it was probably, like, I started when I was 16, worked in retail till I was, like, 28. So that's 12 years. About 12 years in retail. Um, I had a woman threaten to beat me up. Uh, I had a dude scream in my face because he didn't want to write his checkout, and I told him how I was going to do it, and he got mad at me because he wanted me to write his check. Oh my gosh, he was so angry. Um, I had a dude yell at me because I took too long to process his EBT. I was working at a grocery store. You're tomboy, very rough and tumble. Your mom wanted a girly girl. She keeps telling me to be more femme. Oh, I'm so I'm so sorry, A and W. Ugh. I was like that when I was younger. Uh, I was the girl playing with the boys, playing Legos, and my mom told me I was I'm 10 years old. You're too old to play with Legos. The Lego box literally says ages 9 to 99. I'm not too old to play with Legos, but she thought I was too old to play with Legos. Instead, I wanted, you know, I wanted to be playing with Legos, hanging out with the dudes, climbing trees, that kind of stuff. Um, she'd tell me I never took any pride in my appearance uh, because I didn't dress the way she wanted me to. So I totally feel you. I mean, like I put on nail polish. Holy crap! Like this is this is out of the norm for me. Um, like, I see Quiltoni's nails, and I see Fairy Wing's nails, and I'm like, you know, I should have nice nails if I'm going to do crafting, and someday I'll have an overhead camera for over the table where you can see what I'm doing, and I'm like, my nails should look nice, so I'm trying to get in the habit of doing it, and you have a huge four totes of Legos. Yeah, Legos! Woo! Legos! Oh, Kranitz, do you want to... Ah, I have a thing. Your mom took your Legos and threw them in the trash. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, my mom was babysitting some other kids, and they... and and they play with the Lego, so she wasn't going to throw them away. But she could definitely yell at me for playing with the boys. Time I was up in girl ears. <laughs> yeah, that's really sad that she threw away your Legos. No, 
oh, here's the really stupid thing. You know, now people are all complaining, oh, there's not enough girls in science and stuff, blah, blah, blah. I was like, guess what? Legos kind of give you, like, an idea of, like, which kids are actually going to be good engineers. Of course girls are going to be bad at it if you take away their early learning experiences of it. Like, ah! So, yeah, it's... Um... I don't know what that motion was supposed to be. Just angry. So yeah, and then I, of course, you know, then I get into something like crochet, which is, you know, oh, it's a grandma thing, blah, 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 granny squares. And I'm like, well, my mom would do some sewing when we were younger. But here's the thing, it's kind of like an in-your-face thing. I can crochet and she can't. So even though it's a very feminine woman thing, I'm doing something that she's not able to do. <laughs> so The world needs good moms, not more scientists and engineers. You can have both kinds. You can be a good mom and be an engineer and a, or a scientist. You can have both. Now, what I... If we want to get into like what the world needs, uh, I think our country actually needs to focus on uh, education on dealing with emotions. Because if someone knows how to deal with their own emotions, they're not going to lash out and hurt someone like their kids. You know, if they know how to deal with their emotions, they know how to deal with coworkers, so they're not going to come home angry and beat their kids. You know, so I think that's a. Granted, they're already asking stuff like that of people, of of women. You know, I'm, my family looks at me like, why don't you have kids? I'm like, because I have a job. But you can have both. And the thing is, even if someone chooses to be a mom over an engineer, it doesn't mean they're going to be a good mom either. Like, my sister's a mom and a nurse, and she's doing really, really well. So saying something like that, you know, is, you know, some people might not to be able to do either correctly, but don't take away someone's choice. Climbing trees, ice skating with just shoes, even found a tree swing. Man, got hurt a lot, but learned from mistakes. Exactly. Yeah, so I mean, you know, teach people how to, to interact with other people. Um, yeah, whether it's a mother dealing with her kids, whether it's a guy dealing with females, you know, if they make women feel uncomfortable or whatever, it could put men in a, you know, in a bad spot, even though they were being nice like they had no ill intent you know but if they come off as creepy like that can be bad for them but just teach people how to deal with with emotions and how to talk to each other open communication so there's that snowball fights oh you must live in a place that has snow then kids don't go out interact and sure aren't curious oh, I don't know you must not be around a lot of kids see the stuff that my cousins got into this weekend oh boy the so I went to a wedding this weekend and I have a big family big family my mom side of the family has eight kids my dad's side of the family has six kids most of them got married had at least one kid and all those kids are now like have either kids or are getting married and blah 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 the ones you have now yeah so and so, if you get together with, like, six to eight-year-olds, like, they are asking questions. They are into everything. Actually, even younger, because I think some of the cousins I was watching were, like, three to four years old. And just, they, you know, they're in a safe place. They're with family, so they go off and play together. And this wedding was held at a, an environmental center. So, like, there's walking paths, and there's a lake down the way, and there's all these, like, natural prairie flowers. You're always asking questions and looking stuff up. Yeah, I mean, there's, uh, when I was a kid, um, I was telling Jingles this recently, I was like, we didn't have game consoles at home, even though like the Nintendo was a thing. Um, but instead we had a set of encyclopedias. So yeah, my parents didn't buy gaming consoles and games. They bought encyclopedias. So if I ever had a question, I was looking stuff up. And I was lucky enough that I got my, my mom's side of the family hand-me-down encyclopedias. 
So I had encyclopedias from like 1978 and 1991. So I could cross-reference the articles and it was actually really cool. And I'm pretty sure that's one of the things that, um, you know, fueled my love for, you know, my, my going into being a library, to going into library science. You saved your cousin from drowning. Oh my gosh. While well, all the adults were drunk. Oh, good lord, Rupert. Oh my god. How was this recently? Or were you younger? Jeez. You're strange because you enjoy sewing, crocheting, floral design, arts and crafts because you're a guy. You know, Undertaker, it's super weird that people do that because, like, if you think. If you think. If I say someone's a tailor, you probably think of a dude. But if you say this person's a seamstress, you probably think of a woman. What's the difference between a tailor and a seamstress? Let's go ahead and just kind of throw that question out there. And here's the thing, I don't know the difference between the titles. You were 13 or 14, it was at a wedding. Yeah. Some scene businesses do alterations. Don't know a lot of tailors that do. See, I thought tailors mostly only did alterations. Because most of the time when I hear of a tailor, they're doing suit fittings. And that's, you know, you're fixing the cuffs, you're fixing the lengths of the pants, you're making sure that the, you know, the jacket is you know, snug enough. Your grandma's a seamstress for like 70 years, yeah. Actually, right, so let me go ahead and see if I can find a definition. Seamstress versus tailor. Yeah, generally a seamstress sews clothes, fabric, and apparel for a living. A tailor works at altering clothing and apparel. So the tailors do the alterations. The seamstress basically makes the stuff from scratch. A tailor will work more with suits and coats and even fancy dresses occasionally. Um, uh, and seamstresses can make clothes as well as be tasked with hemming and mending. Yeah, basic life-saving methods. Go root beer float! a good chicken pot pie and I want to eat it before it gets cold. So Undertaker, do you have like a uh, an Instagram link to stuff you've made? You can totally share it in channel. We want to see the things you've made. Yeah, I'm super glad you were too, Ruby. That would be really, really sad. It's actually a purple panda. Let me bring it closer. Oh my gosh, I have a doggo in the room with me. I didn't know she was in here. Do you want to leave? I shut the door. Did you want to leave the room? Did I lock you in here? Oh yeah, she wants to leave. There you go, girl. Go on. Yeah, so the the roommate's dog is a corgi, and she's short to the ground. Um, and so sometimes I don't see her. <laughs> so this was a crochet along I did. Um, Beetle at Bay introduced me to AmagurumiPatterns.net, and that website does like monthly crochet alongs so I did a purple bear purple panda I was gonna make it a purple punk panda but I couldn't find um, I couldn't find spikes that would go through two layers of crocheted fabric go ahead and stick panda here is that visible yeah that's visible but yeah it's a dark purple uh, oh my god, it's like one of the softest yarns I've ever held. Um, it actually has like 
30% alpaca in it and I didn't realize it when I bought it. So I'm sitting there crocheting with it and I was like, this is so soft. It can't be, a, it can't be just acrylic. There's got to be something else. And I probably said that like five times while streaming until I finally picked up the label and looked at it. You don't, most stuff was made in middle school or high school. Been a while since you've done anything to that nature. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Well, I mean, you guys can see the doggie anyway. She was lying like off camera. Yeah, she's adorable Corgi. She's super cuddly. Um, it kind of creates problems though, because she also likes to hide under our bed. So we've started putting up a baby gate by our door when we leave for the day. Because we want to keep our door open for airflow in the house. But doggy like hides under the bed and then the roommates are like where the hell did she go did we leave her outside did she run away oh no she's just under their bed you still enjoy doing it amazing how calming sewing or crocheting can be yeah it's awesome stuff now i went for about two months without being able to crochet or anything uh this month or this month this year I went about two months, uh, I'd gotten a new job, it was a terribly long commute, and then we moved. As you can see, we still have boxes all over the place from moving. Um, we're just really short on space to shuffle things around. So, um, what else are we talking about? We're talking about family weddings, lots of people. Mm. What kind is it? The, oh, I have no idea. I'm guessing Pembroke. She has her own uh, Instagram account. Let me find it. And I will link it to you because the roommate is also a cosplayer and she has cosplayed with the dog. I know it has the dog's name in the Instagram account. Come on, where you at? Oh wait, I tagged her in something. I can just go to that picture. Here we go. So, she's a famous little cosplay doggo. Ripley.corgi. The, do the dog's name is Ripley. You looked at trying 5D art. A friend of mine does that on her stream. Seems fairly easy to do and can choose for a lot of cool designs. Um, 5D. I do not know what 5D art is. Let me, uh, let me Google it. Boop, 5D art. Oh, the diamond painting stuff? Yeah, Ripley is an adorable little cutie. Um, I think if you go scroll down far enough, um, you'll see that Ripley actually was used in a live action version of an anime. Oh, that was one of the things she had done. Alright, here we go. She gets to play Ayn in a Cowboy Bebop project. But I don't know what uh, which Cowboy Bebop project. Meryl's are blue and back. Okay. I don't think I've actually watched anyone do the diamond painting on stream. Like, most of the people have done it off stream. And, uh... But I think they do it off stream because it is relaxing. When you're streaming and trying to do crafting and stuff, you kind of need something that's a little easier. Otherwise, you're too silent during the stream. And also, it's kind of why today we're in just chatting. I don't, I don't have anything that's easy to work on right now. Uh, the few things I have, or the things I have on my plate, actually are going to take a bit of concentration, and I'm going to be working on those off stream until I get caught up. Ooh, granite! I found a 5D painting uh, diamond kit for you. Uh, 
I won't let me whisper you. Brandon just won't let me whisper you. Do you have whispers turned off? Alright, I guess I'll, um... Find you on, uh, Discord instead. It's a, a diamond kit. A diamond painting kit. Oh, I didn't... Ooh, I didn't look at it carefully enough. I'm sorry. Uh, it was a lady in a pretty red dress. That's all I saw. With, like, a moon behind her. I didn't see the rest of the picture. I'm sorry. Um, actually, let me just... Try and maybe delete that. From the... Like, where'd it go? Alright, we're, we're gonna not be googling that anymore. You'll be right back. Thanks for letting me know. Alright. I'm almost done with dinner here. And then we can open up the St. Jude box. Yay, St. Jude box! You need to find your mom's cat. Uh-oh. Go, kitty, go. Be safe. Who does it on stream? I didn't read that that bit about them streaming. Because, like I said, the people I know who've done it do it off stream. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, your friend, your diamond painting friend. name going to paste it in the twitches going to find her um it says no results found for her no extra spaces uh, no results for Celine underscore 11b and I copy pasted it Looks like there's no uh, underscore. We'll go ahead and throw her a follow. Oh, she has a little pity. Oh, a pit bull. So in my head, that last thing you just wrote did not translate properly. Let me read it to you the way I read it in my head. The last painting she was working on was a birthday gift for her dad of the universe. And I'm like, wow, what's a dad of the universe? Like, how do you get that title? I'm like, wait, no. It was a birthday gift of her dad. The painting was of the universe. My brain did not do it. My brain did a fail. Alright, so we probably have like four more bites here. And then we can actually get to like the cool unboxing stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I know Kranich will be interested in the unboxing. Also, I know if I do a, a giveaway for a specific item, Kranich will totally be all over that. Right, dude? 
there's something that he pretty much said he killed us for. I think he wasn't joking. I know, it's purple and made of canvas and goes around your neck. If I was to do a giveaway for the purple thing, canvas goes around your neck, ties around the back. Unless you managed to acquire one already. Yeah. Then I'll pull it out and show you again. Bit of food. Now, time for the unboxing. Yep, social eating isn't a stream title anymore. Otherwise, I probably would have done that. Social eating! Alright. So, first off, yeah. this would not be possible. Oh my gosh, there go some yarn balls. Alright, so this would not have been possible without the generous people donating to the St. Jude charity while I was running the... I'm going to move the camera. Because I'm going to be both standing up and sitting down. Now, even though I zoomed out, it's not quite enough. So thank you to all the generous people donating to the St. Jude Play Your Life fundraiser I did. You can't find them, uh oh. So I have an idea as to what's in here. Because there were certain milestones we hit. Like I said, the last fundraiser we did, they surprised us with some rewards that we were not, that we had no idea were coming. So perhaps there's some surprises in here. So we'll open up this one, and then I'll open up uh, the other one and show you guys what's in the other one. So this one is from the April-May 2019 St. Jude Playlight fundraiser. So first of all, we have, oh my gosh, this thing is huge, a playmat. It's, it's very heavy, too. So it says, play for more than just bragging rights. Enormous playmat. Sorry about that, Rubier. <laughs> so yeah, this is a pretty hefty play map. Um, yeah, it's a mouse. It's like the mouse pad material play mat. It goes underneath your keyboard underneath your mouse so it covers your whole desk. This will probably be a giveaway item. Uh, I already have a play map, so I will probably be putting this up as a giveaway. The next thing is a tumbler. And currently we have a giveaway going on for the previous tumbler. So this is the new tumbler. So this is a 28 ounce one. I think the other one says it's a 30 ounce one. It also says play for more than bragging, just bragging rights. Saint Jude play live on the back. Very nice tumbler. So if you guys want to enter the giveaway for the current tumbler, not this tumbler, I'll grab the other one. It's exclamation ticket. Tumblr. So that's from 2019. 
This one here, our current giveaway item, is from the 2018 Creative Giveaway, or Creative St. Jude fundraiser. And this has the purple play button that says play for more than brag, just bragging rights. Too many tickets. Oh, did you, you may have entered. So this giveaway has been open for almost a month now. If you previously entered uh, and if you bought 10 tickets, it won't let you enter again. Uh, so this is the purple one. This is the black and red one. This one's gonna be given away on Thursday. So I'll draw for that on Thursday. But you get your first ticket for free, you can buy up to 10. All right, and then we have T-shirt. Play for more than just bragging rights. This is in my size, so I will be wearing this. Hooray! I'm gonna have an entire like closet of like just stream appropriate clothes. That's kind of what I'm aiming for to do now. Where I have like five St. Jude shirts, and I can just wear them on stream all the time. So I've this is my second t-shirt, I believe, and I have three yarny shirts, like yarn related to two or three yarn related t-shirts. So I'm almost at five stream shirts, but then I like wearing them out and about too. Like I made it a point to wear my St. Jude shirt uh, to the airport when I went flying on uh, Friday. Oh wait, today is lipstick day. Oh shoot, I need to repost my Instagram thing. Wait, no, that was yesterday. Oh, I missed it, I missed lipstick day. I posted it early. St. Jude was doing another thing with for the kiss. Mwah. And like wear your brightest red lipstick and I totally botched it by posting like three days early. I was way too excited for it. And then, now this is the thing I'm most excited about. I got the hoodie. Yeah, this is probably gonna be like one of my new work attires. Thing is, this room is too hot to wear a hoodie. Way too hot for a hoodie. Um, but at work, I can do that. And this will be awesome, yes. Um, I'd say that like I 100% earned this on my own, but I did not 100% earn this on my own. The uh, Positive AF community, which Fairy Wings is the the coordinator, the, the founder, she's the founder of the Positive AF uh, team and community. Um, she ran a fundraiser kind of on the side where we could buy shirts uh, and they say, I'm Positive AF, that cancer can message deleted. So that's really cool. Um, and so what they did is they went to members of the community like near the last few days of the uh, of the fundraiser and they made sure they hit the $500 mark if they hadn't. So I was about, I think, I think they ended up donating about $165 to my campaign so I could hit this mark. So the Positive AF community, Positive AF team uh, is a huge part of why I was able to hit the, uh, the hoodie milestone. So we had about, and then someone else donated actually a little later uh, after prize bit closed off. So I think the ending total was something around like 505 or five, uh, $510 for the, uh, the April, May fundraiser. Hooray! <laughs> All right, so that's in this box. And the thing is there's a lot of space in the boxes. So I'm probably gonna combine the, the this one plus the next one. All right, so these I'm actually gonna wear. So they're gonna be put off to the side. I will be washing them and wearing them. All right. Now this this is the big dark secret that this is actually just hiding stuff right now. All right. So when we did the creative fundraiser, pay no attention to the stuff behind the towel. Oh, this is the current giveaway item. Uh, so when we did the creative fundraiser back in December. We also got a box of prize stuff. Now they only advertised like one or two things that were a prize. Like I think the, the only thing they advertised was a t-shirt and I was fine with that. But I raised so much money <laughs> for that fundraiser. It was probably my, it was my best fundraiser so far. Um, so the only thing that was 
like I said, advertised was a t-shirt. Uh, I think the tumbler may have been advertised also. However, here are the surprise things they sent us. This amazing scarf. And it's, it's all game themed. So like on the top here, there's arrows. So there's arrows on the top and bottom. And it says play four more than just bragging rights, just like everything else. It is a long scarf. On the back of the scarf, it says St. Jude Play Live and has all these little hearts on it. Okay, it, it, there's no just in it. It says play for more than bragging rights. It doesn't say play for more than just bragging rights. Um, so I was reading that incorrectly. Now, Kranitz. Yeah, scarf. Keeping the scarf. Your cat is chewing on the boxes. I'm waiting for Kranitz. Kranitz, yes. I think there's something in here that Kranitz was very, very interested in. If I was ever to do a giveaway for it. Twitch Creative Aprons. They have a nice pocket on the front. I'm going to say St. Jude on the pocket. It says Twitch Creative on the, the front here. And this was also an unexpected part of it. These will be part of the giveaway for the next round of fundraising. Who is that that I can't read? Hello! You showed up in like this greenish yellow, I can't see your name, but welcome to the stream. So yes, we will be doing giveaways for these Twitch Creative Aprons. Um, as far as I know, as far as I know, the next fundraiser is going to be the November-December Creative Fundraiser. Now that doesn't mean something else might pop up in between, because this past year they surprised us with a board gaming uh, January fundraiser. Thank you, thank you, thank you for the host! I am who? Let's see who we are. Oh, my thing is not working very well. Laughing Man, hello! Use dark mode chat. Ooh! Maybe I can try that. Okay, how the heck do I... I don't even know how to change that. Okay, so I'm zooming in a bit. What's with all the boxes I'm moving or something? We... I, I moved to my current location a few months ago. Uh, but this is all the St. Jude stuff. So these are, these are the St. Jude uh, things that I've received, and they've shipped me. So the boxes you're seeing are just St. Jude prize stuff. But I've also condensed them, so now I can get rid of the smaller one. Hooray! I love getting rid of boxes, especially with having so many around lately. I'm just going to set it outside the door. Hi, puppers. Want to play with the box? I don't know how cat-like you are. Maybe you want to play the box. So these are the, the prizes that I will also be using as giveaways for incentives for the next fundraiser. So, we've managed to fill this box. Kind of condense some stuff in here. Uh, these are the... Oh, this, this is the current giveaway. I should probably set this on the table and advertise it. We will be drawing for this on Thursday, August 1st. If you want to enter for the tumbler mug, exclamation point ticket, and you can buy up to 10 tickets. First ticket's free. Every ticket after that costs 20 points. Points you get by just hanging out and watching. So if you want to check your points, that's exclamation points. And if you want to buy your ticket, it's exclamation ticket space number of tickets you'd like to buy. Alright. Even though this is not a giveaway item, it's just going to be going in. Right, no, I should probably put it in my regular clothes, so I don't forget and end up giving it away. You know, and I did I did get four aprons. I don't know where the fourth one went. I think that's the one that I claimed for myself, but I just don't know where it ended up going. 
charity nerds. Okay. All right. So, fundraising box. All the stuff. I also have a bunch of stuff in this other St. Jude's box. And this is the stuff that is marked uh, BlizzCon and TwitchCon. So it's just random stuff from the conferences. Like I have my badge here and oh I have the amazing picture. Now you guys probably can't see this very well. I I'll probably come up closer. I might even like put it as a picture in my panels because it's one of the most amazing things. This is me meeting up with some of the other Twitch creative people at TwitchCon. Um, there's Samuel's Creations, there's myself, Fairy Wings, Mini Burger, Mr. Mini Burger, Nightshade, and oh my gosh, I don't remember the last person. And another person. I will have to ask Fairy Wings who this is. And I will tag everybody and put links to their channels, because this was an awesome evening. <laughs> I have a Fairy Wings magnet. Uh, and Vex Effects. If you guys aren't familiar with Vex Effects, he put on a fantastic... He basically put on a service to the whole creative community at TwitchCon. He opened up his suite. He got a suite at the hotel. And he opened it up. His room, his bedroom... And he set out drinks. He had a space and a table where everyone could put their cards, their stickers, their magnets, and people could take things, follow people after the fact. It was so amazing. Probably just one of the best networking things that I've ever seen. And I realized I put the mug right behind my picture. So you can't even see it. But now you can see it. Win this! Exclamation point ticket. So, now. Moving on to the second part of the stream. Hooray! It is the stash exchange. What in the world is a stash exchange? Well, the group I was part of when, before I moved, it's called the Nerdy Knitters. And there's kind of a lot of people in the group. Uh, I was looking at the, the meetup and there's probably, I think there was something like 300 people uh, on the meetup. But not everybody's a paid member, and our stash exchange is a paid member event. So what we do, we all go through our yarn stashes. And as I was saying in the beginning of the stream, purchasing yarn and using yarn are two different hobbies. So I have a lot of yarn. Some of it I've purchased. A lot of it was just kind of handed to me, uh, so it donated to me. And it's stuff that I don't have any idea what I want to do with. I don't have any project ideas for it. So we go through our stashes. That's what you could call like your pile of yarn. Whoa! And you go through your stash and you pull out the stuff that you're not gonna use. You know, it's like, I don't have an idea for this project. You know, I really hate this color. I never see myself using it. And you take your basket or bag or box of yarn you're not gonna use and you all bring it together and you put it on a table and we sorted it out by color so you kind of had an idea so you know sort of okay here's some browns and here's a bunch of white and oh my gosh someone brought in all this pink um you get to pet baby sheep every day oh come on it so we take all our yarn we're not going to use and we put it together i think there's about 30 people who go to this event there's there's, there's like a cap on the number of people that can be in the room it's a, you know uh we, we actually had to get a bigger location but I think at this point, nobody's turned away. I think it's actually, it's to the point where everybody who wants to go can go. So we put all this stuff there and then we have tickets and someone's calling out our name, uh, calling out the ticket number, so it's random. And they get to go up and they get to pick one item off the table. And we did this for two rounds. We, we had the option of one, maybe two rounds. You know, if there's stuff you really like, because they don't want everyone to rush up there and just someone grab all the, the stuff because there is some yarn that's better than others um, like you know acrylic is one of the cheaper yarns and then if someone has like bamboo or silk or merino those are much nicer fancier yarns and uh, so calling the names gives people a chance to, to try and get one of the good ones so 
the stuff that I ended up with. So this is going to be going in reverse order. Like obviously the first stuff I picked is the bottom. And we're going to come to the top. So one of the last things I picked up, and I didn't need to pick this one up. It's sort of a marigold, but it has like this rust color red in it. I might use it for something. It's interesting enough where I might use it. This is called Fun Fur. Super fuzzy. Fun Fur or Eyelash Yarn. I think this is the... Uh, it's called Cello. So this is a different brand. It's not Fun Fur. That's a specific brand name. It's Eyelash Yarn. So it's very fuzzy, but it's very good for animal details. Uh, if you've seen... Um, Cheerful Chameleon has a fox pattern. The, the tips of the fox ears are made with Fun Fur. I've been kind of thinking about using the fun fur for something like that, but I didn't have white. So I have fun fur in other colors. Like I have a cream, but I didn't have white. So I found these two, and these are the same brand, slightly different colors. It's a cotton and I think it's polyester mix. Yeah, 80 cotton, 85 cotton, 15% polyester. So it's a nice blue and speckled blue. Again, don't have a plan for right now, but I, these would actually make really good dishcloths. You know, people say that like the sugars and cream would make good dishcloths, but I feel the sugar and cream is too thick. This is much thinner, and I would love to try and weave with this and make like a hand towel out of it. I think it would work really, really well. So, uh, and then there's this gray. It's, well, it's a grayish white. It's called linen, but I got it because it is the um, Vanna, Vanna's Choice brand. I, this is probably my favorite. This is my favorite yarn right now, but I can find almost any color I need for it. So Vanna's Choice, it's relatively inexpensive. There is this amazing colorway here. Now I need to search up this, uh, this lot number here, because I don't know what brand this is, but I think this is either a Lion brand or Red Heart landscape type yarn. So it's very soft. It's a little thick and thin. Oh, you got you can't say you have to work in the morning. All right, root beer float. Enjoy your evening. Sleep well. Oh, so this is also like a purpley, purpley red, alternating colors. Again, don't know what, but I like the color and I like the texture of this also. Uh, this is a similar texture to this. It could very well be the same brand, different colorways. So this is a black and gray. I do have a blanket that I'm working on that requires about this type of yarn for a row. Or, ew, the W word. Oh, no. <laughs> but yeah, it has, has a very nice soft feel to it. Uh, let's see, and I have... So this is Aunt Lydia's, but it's blue with sparkles in it. I had wanted to pair this with another yarn for a specific look. Oh, let's see, what is the composition of this? If this contains silk, I don't have to buy extra yarn. All right, so it says it's super fine. It's called Aqua Ice, but it's not telling me the composition here. Oh, 96% uh, viscose and 4% metallic. Well, viscose is not silk. It's soft, but it's not silk. I kind of actually want real silk for the thing I want to pair it with, which is what something I got at last year's Stash Exchange. Uh, it's a very crazy art yarn, and uh, I want something that'll work with it. This could probably work with it, but the thing I found was exactly what I was looking for. It's what I was picturing without knowing it existed. Uh, and so this is a very soft, fuzzy, red, purple, shiny, crazy ball of fur. Uh, this will probably also go in the scrappy blanket, but it's just, it's so fun I couldn't not pick it up. I don't even know if you guys can see the sparkles in here. Not really. Yeah, you guys can't see how sparkly this is. This is crazy sparkly. And then we have this soft angel hair. It looks like a dog. I mean, like, it looks like a, a terrier fur. It's so soft. Um, it's... 22% wool, 50% acrylic, and 28% nylon. So it actually contains wool. It's very soft. So soft. 
Uh, it's called Angel Hair by Sensations. Made in Turkey. Turkish yarn. Uh, I picked this up because I know I'm a little short on orange. Uh, this also might be Vanna's Choice, but it's possible it's a different brand. Uh, this could be Impeccable. This could be the Michaels Impeccable brand. They're very similar. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually, I'm pretty sure this is Impeccable because this is a smaller skein than this is. Like, this is big. Puffy. Ah, so this was my second choice pick. It's green. It's very dark green, so very holiday feeling. Also has sparkles in it. Trendsetter Yarns Firefly. It's getting stuck on my fingers. So, wow, there's a lot of different things in here. Polyamid, 38%. Acrylic, 21%. Alpaca, 19%. 14% polyester. And 8% merino. So it's a really weird mixture of stuff. Um, but yeah, I see this making a very fun uh, holiday, Christmas holiday type piece. And the thing I first picked up... There's three skeins of this. It goes to like a green, aqua, and dark green, and sort of like a greenish gray color. Same as like this purple one, a little thicker. Uh, so this is Loops and Threads, also a, also a, a Michaels brand, or at least Michaels carries it, I should say. Uh, but I have three skeins of this. So what we were saying is uh, earlier is that one item would also include all the matching skeins. So this would be one item. The other one, um, it's kind of messy. It's in a separate little bag, but it sort of fell apart. And also, I picked up a book. So it's, it's not just yarn that we've put in together. If we have extra needles or crochet hooks or books, magazines, there's so many magazines. Uh, and somebody brought in, actually I'll show you. So this one is called The Handmade Marketplace. How to sell your crafts locally, globally, and online. So this is gonna help not just me, but also Jingles when we decide, or when we're able to get our laser cutter back up and do the laser cut wood items. So. Marketing basics, blogging, how often should you post? Putting together a press kit. Like, that's cool. Learning how to do promotional postcards. Pricing your work, bookkeeping. All that kind of, you know, important but boring but very important stuff. Now, I told myself when I went on to this uh, thing yesterday, I'm only going to fill the one bag. I brought in a box. I brought in a big box of yarn. I said, I'm only going to fill up one bag. I'm going to bring in a box box that's this big, I'm only going to bring home one bag. Well, I failed. I failed at only bringing home one bag. Um, I'm not terribly upset about it. I probably should be more upset that I, I didn't stick to my guns. Did I actually think I was only going to come back with one bag? It was possible. So this is bag number one that I filled. Now bag number two... So those are the things people brought. They brought in like extra bags because sometimes when you work on projects, you must stick them in separate bags. Like right here. This is a bag I got from Anime LA. And it has a part of a project in here. What project is this? Oh, this is the Kerbal. This is part of the Kerbal that I got frustrated with. Um, so... This was a quilted bag that was on the table, up for grabs. Mm, I got all that zinc ore. Ooh, are you playing Minecraft? So, all these pieces here. These are all each knitting looms. Oh, and there's a couple more pieces, a couple more skeins of yarn in here as well. That's right. So I got this one. I think there's two of that. Oh, there are my sunglasses. They're in the bag. I couldn't find them this morning. 
So two of this multicolor purple, pink, blue, green yarn. It has some 100% acrylic, but it's a bunch of fun colors. Astroneer! Yes, that's right, you were playing Astroneer. And then there's this sparkly pink and brown. It's soft. I didn't want to let it go. I mean, because after a while there's still stuff on the table and people are like, take things, take the yarn. Uh, let's see, it's called Cedar Rose and it is a mohair blend. Where, where's the full breakdown? 70% acrylic, 11% wool, 11% mohair. And all the knitting loops. So. Four hat looms. Each of these can make a hat. Four sizes for that. Well, let me let me try this again. Two of them are actually hat looms. It's like this is like a kid's hat and this is an adult hat. These would be more like I'd be making bags. They're, they're pretty big. I'd be making bags out of those ones. These ones are scarves, blankets, lapgans. So like this would be a scarf. This is actually kind of a big scarf. Um, not entirely sure what the longer ones would be, but you know, I'm, I'm gonna need to do a lot of internet research and YouTube video watching. And this one, this is a blanket loom. So this is pretty awesome. Pretty long. Now with a knitting loom, I'm not entirely sure if both ends count because it kind of doubles up on itself. I don't know if you can see that, how it's like two rows of pegs here. I'm pretty sure each row is by itself, but the way this is set up, it looks like it folds on a it folds together, so it's like it would be doubly thick. I don't know how that works. But again, it'll be a lot of YouTube videos. And probably some loom knitting streams. Uh, the reason I picked these up is I've watched some loom knitting stuff before, and it looks a lot faster than uh, traditional knit and crochet. So I could crank out a lot of projects this way. Uh, I also weave, so I have a loom. I also have a spinning wheel, um, and weaving is also going to use up a lot of yarn. I just need to do it. Uh, I've, since I've moved, I don't have the nice long table I had previously to um, to warp my loom, which is basically get a project started. You need to put the you need to put the yarn on in one direction when you're weaving, and that's called warping. And you usually want a lot of space for that. Sometimes you can use warping pegs where you go around and around and around, kind of like this idea, where you go around and around and around. Uh, I haven't done that yet. Uh, I'm going to have to probably figure it out because I have a lot less space than I did previously. So, that is my haul from the Stash Exchange, the 2019 Nerdy Knitter Stash Exchange. So hopefully, the idea, now the idea isn't just to get rid of all my yarn. The idea is to use it and make stuff. And have it make you sneeze in the process. And create! <laughs> so, the more variety I think of yarn that I get, the more color combinations, the more my brain works on how could this be made into a cool item. That is what I do when I go yarn looking, and I think that's kind of what a lot of people do. They look for this cool, you know, inspiration in the colors of the yarn. So, I need to look at my notes, and I'm looking around. We've kind of come to completion with most of the St. Jude stuff. Thank you, Kranit. Come to completion with most of the St. Jude stuff, except for something. So at the 20, 2018 November December Creative uh, fundraiser, I said if we reached a thousand dollars, I would make a blanket. Actually, I think that was the $500 mark. I would make a blanket and I would donate 
or and I would give away the blanket to somebody who had donated at least five dollars. So every five dollars, people were getting tickets into the drawing. Well, it's been almost nine months now. Uh, two, three. Four, five, five maroon squares. One, two, two other colored squares. I'm not quite counting these because these are a little small. They don't quite fit the 12 by 12 uh, require. Or actually, nine by nine. These are supposed to be nine inches by nine inches. These are probably like eight by eight, maybe eight and a half. Uh, I might be able to figure out how to work these in. I don't know how to work them in at the moment. Maybe it just means that those particular squares are a little more stretched. I don't know. I don't even know if that short will work. So I have slightly different shades of, these are sort of like cream purpley colors, and this is like a cream and gray. Uh, this is a pink and bluish gray colors there. So I need two more of those and one more of these. One, two, three four, five, and we're working on number six right now. What time is it? So apparently when I tell stories, my watch thinks that I'm working out. So it says from 7.20 to 7.33, I had a 13 minute workout. That's kind of funny. Hey Vern, how you doing? It's been a long time. All right, so somewhere, ah, here we go. The St. Jude blanket, I need an H hook and I'm making 12 nine inch squares. It's gonna be a lapgan size. So I need an H hook, which means I need to find where I put my hooks. I have rearranged all this stuff. So I have a whole box that's just hooks and eyes, like eyes for the, um, the Amagurumi. It's, it totally is a labyrinth shirt that you spy. Did I grab an H hook in all of this? Of course I didn't. Yes, it is a labyrinth shirt. Uh, we had a subscription to what was called a loot crate box. Uh, and this shirt does not fit jingles anymore, so uh, I got to. There's an H hook. So I inherited it. So I am still working on doing uh, crocheted items for our 2018 November um, St. Jude incentives. I have four and a half nine inch granny squares I still need to make. Possibly less, possibly less. But four and a half, maybe only two and a half. Uh, but I need to make some decisions on some of the squares in this pile here. So the goal here is, we've got 820. All right. Goal is, let's see, to get at least one round all the way around here. That would be excellent. So Vern, what have you been up to? Like, like I said, long time no see. I had a few months where I wasn't able to stream or even watch streams, so like, I don't know what's going on. Give me the deets. No deets? All right, there we go. We want to be, yes, here. This is the the end. Oops, is that the end? No, this is the end. All right, good. I want to make sure we keep this as, you know, clean as possible. I mean, it's not a little mess. It gets messier as you go along. So yeah, we got the center pull going on. And yeah, 
so uh, in one of these other boxes is the bucket with all the names to be doing this drawing. You've been house hunting and working betwixt those and playing on my phone all day. The crochet is slowed down. Thumb gets tired. Oh, I get that. Yeah, like this particular yarn is a little rough to work with, and so I'm like doing more with my wrists and my like my lower arms here. So I'm not as fast with this yarn as I am with some of the other ones, just because it is a little tougher to pull through. Same with cotton. Cotton is very stiff and gets stuck on itself. So yeah, I need to find the the bucket o names, and then uh, when I'm on the last square, I want to draw the uh, want to draw the name. I'm gonna work on contacting the person because if it's not someone who's a regular, for all I know, they could not be on Twitch anymore. They might not be in my Discord. I might not be able to Discord message them. Granite says only has 18 monitors in your new room. And a sad face, 18 monitors isn't enough? I mean, dude, I only have two. Do they all run off the same computer? Like, it, how does that work? Yeah, like this is already so... I spent two hours crocheting yesterday while waiting for the stash exchange to start. And I was using the uh, Lion Brand Mandala yarn uh, to make the corner to corner blanket that I'm doing for my brother. Two hours, not a problem. I've done what, like one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I have seven clusters. And already I'm tired. It's the jingles. Who is this person? Oh, oh, got it. Okay. I thought the name was at top and it said cock. I'm like, who's cock? <laughs> it's the make of the vehicle. <laughs> like, well. <laughs> I thought that was the last name. <laughs> Kawasaki. So Jingles went out and made a purchase today. A big, fun purchase. Kind of word. Kind of <laughs> word. What are you of? Let's see. All right. How many outlets does your room have? Yeah, that's a really good question, too. If you have 18 monitors running, how many outlets do you have? My computer... My computer and two Ryzen 7 servers. Oh. Kranitz watches the, uh, the Twitch streamers. He has many, many people up at once, and he says he has 18 monitors to watch them on. Yeah, he says it's a lot of power, too. <laughs> Each of the two servers has two 1050 TIs. My goodness, that's some power. I believe so. It says each of the two ser servers has two 1050 TIs. <laughs> Jingles is uh, doing uh, amperage math here. That's just on the servers, and then the machine, and the monitors themselves. They talk about another kind of word. Another kind of word. What are you afraid of? How hot is your room? Like, does those monitors, like, depending on what kind of monitors are, they've got to put off a bit of heat. I 
I must away to bed. All right, Vern, it was good to see you as well. I shall have a great rest of the stream. I'm so glad you stopped by. Six to eight, you have huge six foot long trip like surge bars with like 16 to 24 outlets. LEDs, so not very hot. And you have your own AC unit. <laughs> Yeah, depending on, like, some of them can. Like, the, well, the TV gets hot. That's not a monitor. That's a TV. So right now I have I have a monitor. The, I have an Asus, and then I have a Panasonic TV. We have another monitor over here that we're not quite using, but we also don't have a bracket to put it up on, and it doesn't have the... It's right leaning against the table. or the. It was one of your old monitors. And you have your own AC unit. Yeah, so I, I have I have a TV and I have a regular monitor. That's that's what I use here. Uh, and when I'm playing on the Switch, when I'm doing the Just Dance streams, that is that that's just using another input for the the TV. So I just. Uh, I have a capture card for that that I use for the Just Dance streams. A capture card. That was an awesome little find on Jiggle's part. Which I do need to do another Just Dance stream, but before I do that, I need to clean up this room so I have room to do the dance. Otherwise, I'm gonna hurt myself. I don't wanna hurt myself by streaming. Dancing. All that. Don't wanna do that. You know what? Originally, I, what I said in my tweet and my um, stuff is that I was going to play Overwatch today. I am crocheting. I'm not playing Overwatch, am I? Hmm. Maybe when I'm done with this, I'll switch over to Overwatch. Krantz, you want to join me? I'll stop stream. I won't, I won't stream Overwatch tonight. The thing is, I actually want to win. So... Because when you win, you get the, the boxes for the special event, and the special event just reset today. Yay, special event boxes! You overwatch, you guess. <laughs> if you really don't want to, you don't have to. I was just throwing it out there. Because uh, uh, Jingles and I play, so like it might be nice to have a three stack. And you're pretty good. The summer stuff. I don't think it's the summer summer games. Maybe it's the summer games. It is summer games, yeah. So like, uh, I think Genji has a new skin. It's a fencing skin. Um, there's some sprays. Uh, May had a new skin last week, but I don't think it was exactly summer games related. I wasn't, I couldn't quite figure out what sport it was supposed to be. Ah, you didn't realize. But yeah, they're doing it for like three weeks and each week um, you can earn new skins and sprays and blah blah blah. Do you collect the stuff in Overwatch or you're kind of like done with it, you don't like the game so much? Also, you have jingles in the habit of being like, thanks, Jeff Kaplan. Yeah, he, he does that now, too. Yeah, that's probably the correct emoji face to put up there. Oh, actually, our roommate made this awesome video um, that's along those lines, and uh, he didn't send me the link, so I can't pass it on. I'll have to ask him for it after stream. Oh, it's so funny, though. He's a widow main, uh, and he's pretty darn good. 
let me update since I haven't played since the last event. Yeah, it's kind of a big update patch. Um, let's see. They, well, because they put in the information, I think, for Crazy Man. Oh, have you seen the stuff, the new guy, the Sigma? Did you see the Sigma video? If you haven't seen the Sigma video, you should watch it. Even if you don't like Overwatch, even if you don't care about the new dude, uh, it's a cool video and it's very reminiscent of like comics. It's a very comic centered thing. I, I, did you like it? You, you seem kind of like meh about it. I thought it was like the beginning to a cool story. Like it, it would be really cool as his own like villain type in a cinematic, comic cinematic universe. Yeah, you're meh about it, all right. But yeah, it seemed very, it felt like a, like a Batman origin story of one of the villains. That's what it felt like to me. It felt like a Batman origin story. Just, it has the same kind of darkness to it. And it's crazy, because you're he's a playable character. He's supposed to sort of, I don't want to say good guy, but sort of good guy. Because like, all the Overwatch people are supposed to be sort of good guys, right? Even though Overwatch is dead. I mean, we're talking about... That's what I don't understand. If Overwatch is supposed to be dead, why, why is the game called Overwatch? Because well, they have all this baggage from everything that happened after Overwatch. One, two, and three. Alright, so we did finish one row all the way around. So awesome. How long did that take us? 13 minutes. Like Moira, exactly, yeah. She, I would call her a gray character. Moira's gray, I'd say Reaper's gray, um, as far as like moral stance or whatever. Some people are pretty gray, gray areas. All right, we're gonna go ahead and try and do one more round. Um, each row ends up with either four or eight, I believe, more clusters than the previous row. So this will take us at least 13 minutes, but well, probably more. Yeah, I bet Moira probably worked with uh, Sigma, but maybe not. Oh, actually, actually, if you go to the very end of the video and pause it, you see the silhouette of three females in the game: Moira, Widowmaker, and Sombra. That really makes me wonder. Like, I know Sombra. Sombra was also part of Blackwatch, right? All three of them were. Or were they all part of just a one specific mission? Yeah, I know, you're Sombra girl. Would you say Sombra's a goth? No, she's not Blackwatch? Okay. I didn't think so, but I know they did a mission together. Oh, she's used as talent? All right. Oh crap, so what's the difference between Talon and Blackwatch? You don't care if she's goth or not, she's hot. Progress. I've turned the first corner already, so that's a half a row down. I need to stop both those from firing.
Talon is the criminal organization. Was Blackwatch kind of the shadow Overwatch after Overwatch was officially disbanded? They kind of kept it running for a little while longer? I feel like I'm gonna have to like start digging deep into the Overwatch, uh, Overwatch lore now to answer these questions. No, Black Watch was Black Ops during Overwatch's run. Oh, okay. Yeah, I think I remember one of the videos talking about like it was a silent arm that did the things that Overwatch couldn't publicly do. Now it's basically the dirty stuff. Dirty work of Overwatch. They couldn't get the the glory for it because it's kind of the silent. Okay, that makes sense now. Alright, turning the second corner now. So we have one and a half sides done of this. So, how many people who are on Talon were part of Blackwatch? Because I think that's where my brain is getting a little confused. Was it the similar was it a similar team? Reaper and Moira? Okay. Yeah, they're gonna say, where does Sigma fit in? But since he's so new, I mean, the, the thing we watched about the whole gravity and breaking his mind and all that, like, that might be all the information we get. Well, until we start hearing some of his voice lines, that's when we'll really find out, like, what the heck is going on. This is, is because of saying this, this yarn actually is kind of rough to use. Um, it's putting some strain on my right shoulder. So I'm going to finish these rows and then uh, I'm just going to stretch first. Yeah, it's putting some unnecessarily strain on my shoulder and the thing is when that starts acting up it's nearly impossible for me to stretch it out and I need to end up taking muscle relaxants for it and that's not cool I prefer not to do that because the muscle relaxants also knock me out and I can't do anything and I have kind of a busy week planned ahead so I don't want to be out of commission for any reason Turn to the next corner. Don't want to 
want to do splitting yarn stuff because splitting yarn is pretty awful. Ticket will get you entered into the giveaway. And the giveaway will be drawn on Thursday, August 1st. I was say October, but it's August 1st. So two days from now. How's your update going, Granite? corner here and I have a half a row to go. Slow. Oh no. It was kind of a big one, if I remember correctly. Oh no. Splitty yarn. Splitty yarn's bad. stitch here for this round. Excellent. One, two, and three. I'll go ahead and put stitch marker in. And go ahead and measure this. Alright, we are at eight inches. So, maybe two more rounds and we're done with the square. But, since it is hurting my shoulders, we are going to be calling it here. We're gonna find someone to raid! Raid! Alright. Who we got? First of all... and check my Discord and see if anybody in my Discord is currently streaming. Aw, uh, Crochet Dude is! He's making a pride crochet scarf. That's awesome. Dude. Ooh, we have to remember how he spells his name. Let me just go to following. People I'm following. Oh, it is just Crochet Dude, because I know his, uh, his Twitter is a little different. Sending all the love to him! Alright, guys. 
thank you, thank you so much for joining me. Let's take all this love and support and bring it on over to Crochet Dude. And I hope you have a fantastic evening, and I'll see you on Thursday for the drawing of that mug.